What is up guys, Kevin Cage back with another XRP update and I am beyond excited for this video in particular. I'll save my ranting until the end and stick around where I will be discussing some passive income opportunities. Three or four years time you won't say I'm going to do a swift payment. What you'll talk about is doing an international payment and then there'll be multiple ways of settling it in real time. Whether it be using SWIFT, a Ripple initiative, another blockchain, all of these ways will, will also um, be supported through the technology. Boom. Okay, let's kick it off with the famous clip that I always reference. If you just got into XRP in the past year, listen carefully. So this is the famous clip that I always reference, all thanks to I Am Legion on Twitter, absolute must follow, and a great researcher in this community. And in quotes, this is Dilip Rao, formerly at Ripple, and of course now he's an advisor on FlashFX, which is building on-demand liquidity corridors for XRP usage. And now we just had the announcements that this is just the beginning. And now Japan and the Philippines can already exchange utilizing XRP, that is utility. And as we can see here, the SAMA, this is pronounced SAMA, the Saudi Arabian Monetary Authority, this is the central bank of Saudi Arabia. There's a few points I want to show you here because it is massive and it goes unbelievably deep. Of course, Matthew LINY highlighting Arab Monetary Fund using RippleNet, no surprise. We can also see additional connections of the Gulf Central Banks moving to establish a unified system to link payments, all related to the Arab Monetary Fund. And also, if you type in on YouTube, Kevin Cage ACI Worldwide, this is the video that is an absolute must see. This gentleman is of ACI Worldwide, a RippleNet partner that sends $14 trillion on a daily basis and also mentions Ripple replacing SWIFT, meaning RippleNet. Notice RTP real-time payments in the Middle East. And guess which groups are named here? Well, guess what, guys? I added timestamps and notes for everybody if you want to check out this video and you just want to watch a few snippets. And I know people say, oh, if XRP is so good, it would have mooned already, blah, 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 blah. They are in court with the SEC right now in what I consider in terms of fundamentals is, of course, integrations and partners. They are already partnered with XRP integrations. They are already integrated with the top 80% of all tech providers, really the top 20%, which accounts for 80% of all the volume on a transactional basis I'm talking transaction banking this is trillions of dollars so while somebody will say oh well this random crypto can scale better well maybe it's a little more centralized and then they'll say oh well this crypto is more decentralized than XRP in terms of the holdings or even governance and I'll say yes but does it have tons of partners has it been trialed by the central banks for several years and has eight years of success without a single error since its inception no there's many things you have to consider in terms of fundamentals. I don't care if your asset can scale to 100,000 transactions per second. All of that is pointless if it does not have a strong foundation and strong fundamentals. So of course, I provided this link right here back in 2018 when the Saudi Arabian Monetary Authority, the Saudi Central Bank, offered this pilot program, which I'll be referencing today. Then we're going to go into my next point. So offering this pilot for Saudi banks. And also remember this video of Sama and Ripple saying that RippleNet is fully compliant. We don't even need a sandbox environment to test it out. We are good to go. So let's listen to this clip. Now already, for example, you know, uh, last month uh, we had uh, the central bank in uh, Saudi Arabia, you know, Saudi Arabian Monetary Authority. So that's the project that uh, I kicked off with them where they brought about 15 banks to the table, you know, with a deep dive on Ripple technology, mm -hmm. uh, both for the banks and for SAMA. And their initial concern was should we put a sandbox around this technology? But once their regulators got you know, into the nitty gritty, you know, with us and their banks, understood how the banks were going to implement it. They said, no, we don't think there's a need for a sandbox, you know, go for it. And if you want to use it, use it. And already, for example, you know, uh boom, and notice that they said 15 banks. I said about a dozen banks. I wanted to be conservative. And also funny enough, now Ripple Nets is also SOC 2 compliant or SOC 2 certified. You can visit ACI Worldwide's website. They send $14 trillion per day. Yes, this number includes securities. They have over 1,000 of the largest financial institutions on board. As I click this video, you can click the timestamps and hear this gentleman of real time payments at ACI Worldwide discussing. And he mentions all of this $14 trillion a day, 1 billion transactions per day, essentially $5 million on the move every time as fast as you can snap your fingers. Boom, 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 boom. 
And that is exactly the type of volume that we are looking for that will run over blockchain in the future. And my hopes is that it is primarily over the XRP ledger in the world of transaction banking. And yes, we're talking $10 trillion plus of floats that is sitting in pre-funded accounts that is locked up in what I like to call just-in-case money. Talking about the ISO standards, we already discussed Q&T's ISO standard that they created, which is insane. And Ripple is the only DLT focus group on this ISO governing body. For very good reason, focusing on messaging, and Ripple is the settlement layer, the base of the payment stack. These are just things I can't ignore. I can't ignore the fundamentals and the integrations. While somebody argues that this crypto is better because it went up in price 100%, that's a joke. I am here for mass adoption. Companies are looking to save 8-10% to with real-time payment initiatives. Anyways, I could talk about this forever, and Sama is just one of the many central banks. It's already 40-50 to 50 that are actively engaged with the company Ripple. Next up, we've shared by Matthew L-I-N-Y. We have the era of monetary fund using RippleNet for financial inclusion. And I know many people are going to say, but Kevin, this is from last year, 2020. It is not relevant. Really? Because when you do this fundamental analysis and you actually zoom out, you can see this trend and it is incredibly obvious. We also have Buna, B-U-N-A, is to support era banking using blockchain. Notice, financial inclusion, technology-led globalization age. The purpose of Buna is to support the usage of local Arab currencies by providing an alternative to the current correspondent banking channels used for intra-Arab payments. Bottom line. Banks around the world are tired of using and going through the monopoly of the correspondent banking world, this entire network of transaction banking that is controlled by JP Morgan, HSBC, and Citi. They're creating intranetworks, and of course, all of these intranetworks need to be interconnected. Just like David Schwartz has said, CTO of Ripple, who is an early contributor to Bitcoin code as well, if they want to beat the XRP ledger, they're going to have to build their gates or their gardens as open as we are. And I can tell you who's going to win. So, of course, this is all about, you know, payment clearing, settlements, and in line with international standards. The benefits, decreasing liquidity requirements, increase efficiency of cross-border payments, reduce transaction duration, basically all the things that we should have done about 40 years ago. It's funny that payments aren't in real time, but texting, emails, phone calls are in real time. We have information, but value is not in real time. We can look at this massive trend on the macro occurring, and then we can find the right technologies and profit off of those transitions. Talking about global GDP that will be stored on the blockchain by 2025 alone, trillions and trillions and trillions. And I know that we heard the company Constellation talking about this in the token DAG. DAG is going after the trillions of dollars in GDP. Right here, another mention of XRP. And of course, they called it XRAPID back then. This is today on demand liquidity ODL. The software that essentially leverages XRP, but it's actually agnostic and is built to be open and use any asset as well for that matter. So they can even use intra network based permissioned cryptos if the companies or organizations so choose. This is called future proofing, guys. Some people see this as fud or fear. They don't understand the benefits. There's a method to the madness. So anyways, as for the second model, the Ripples DLT and this is, I'm assuming, probably translated, the Ripple's DLT-based solution, XRapid, that uses crypto asset XRP to enable remittance service providers to lower foreign exchange costs, lower those Forex costs, and ensure faster settlements. And these RSPs, this stands for Remittance Service Providers, and they can use crypto assets in their business-to-business -business B2B cross-currency leg. This is happening. And please know, yes, blockchain technology, um, the whole the whole umbrella term of DLT and DAG and Tempo and all of these types of technologies, you've heard central bankers say this verbatim, and I even saw Crypto Eddie highlight this recently, that you need a token. You need the tokens. You need the actual digital assets that are part of this giant trend that we're seeing. Because the tokens have utility. Some of the value may very well be intrinsic rather than extrinsic. Maybe a finite amount can help protect the network from spam with different burn mechanisms. There's so much that goes into it. And they're right here, Matthew L-I-N-Y, highlighting again, Gulf central banks are moving to establish a unified system to link payments. You can read about Project Buna, B-U-N-A, below with its RippleNet connections. And so they directly mention XRP as well, being able to settle, or at least if they so choose to utilize XRP in the future. And I think this is quite obvious because I just showed you an entire clip of Dilip Rao when he was at Ripple saying this very thing. Saying, yeah, Ripple, that's good. Compliant, we don't even need a sandbox. You can start using it or just make XRP an option if you so choose. This isn't surprising whatsoever. And this is why I roll my eyes when people think XRP 
doesn't have sound fundamentals. So this is back April 2021. So very recent, this year, the Arab Monetary Fund holds a virtual workshop to discuss Buna's support to the integration of Arab financial markets. Collaboration with Euroclear, and I know we've mentioned them before. And yeah, that's just a single central bank. We can talk about Singapore, you can talk about Brazil, you can talk about connections to Canada, and all these projects that we're seeing globally, London, etc. So yes, it goes very, very deep. And of course, Japan, how could I forget? Next up, we have Lunar Crush sharing this. With strong social plus market activity, XRP has hit the number one alt rank on Lunar Crush. Out of the top 2,000 coins across the market, congratulations. And of course, that huge push that we saw early yesterday was most likely part of the reason. So congratulations, XRP. And I know we're still waiting for the real moves in this market. Next up, we have the Fear and Greed Index updated, guys. This goes to show how fickle all of us are, myself included, because we believe in current price, and essentially, it really does control us. It keeps us impulsive, and when we're impulsive, we can make silly, silly mistakes. So please, stay calm, stay composed, and do what's best for you. This is not financial advice, just sharing my thoughts. And see, even last week, we were in extreme fear all the way down here, terrified when Bitcoin was going down and testing even below 30K again the past month alone. And there was a lot of uncertainty in this marketplace. Now, Bitcoin's coming up, hitting some of these retracement levels, and everybody's screaming bull run yet again. That's how the game is played. So now we are back to 50 and completely neutral. Very interesting. Next up, we have shared by Stardust Collective. I shared this on Twitter. Stardust Collective did in fact share it on Twitter as well. If you do anything today, please go watch this video. I think that this will give you such a great understanding of how Bitcoin works, of how Ethereum works, you know, L's, uh, layer zero, layer one, and layer two protocols. And this will absolutely level up your knowledge in this ecosystem. It's a 15 minute rant by Andrew Moeller. And man, if you listen to this specifically the end, I think this potentially could change your life forever. And in this video, towards the end, of course, Andrew Moeller does in fact discuss the revenue opportunities and passive income opportunities if you so choose to run a DAG node, which I will be doing. I'm getting early Ethereum vibes with this asset, and yes, and this is not exaggerating whatsoever, please go do your own research and you can look at some of my recent videos, you can watch their channel, you can see active talks and active contracts with the Department of Defense. They even reference it in this video. This is big data. DAG is not a threat to XRP, it's not a threat to my other holds, this is doing something incredibly different, and the success case is unbelievable, and I'm getting goosebumps on a daily basis. So, I wish you guys well, and I wish that you do. Check this out. You don't, I don't care if you hold DAG or not, but inform yourselves. Sharpen your swords. And I'm also smart enough to know that all of these crypto assets that I discuss would be here, would succeed with or without my stupid opinion. It doesn't matter. I'm simply recognizing obvious opportunities and riding these waves. This technology is groundbreaking. XRP, I don't care if you buy XRP, what is that going to do? A small buy order from a retail investor is not going to help me at all. The success case is what I'm looking for because trillions of dollars, even billions of dollars in terms of an increase on some of these blockchains or networks will push the price up exponentially. I want utility. I don't want temporary price swings and hype and shilling. So just sharing, this video is an absolute must-see explained in 15 minutes. And of course, spitting numbers, giving examples of the types of returns and passive income if you were to run a node, which of course could be turning into millions of dollars in revenue per year. And I also saw this and I had to share, guys. I realized it had a lot of retweets. And this is kind of the sad truth of today and today's society specifically. The bank says I can't afford a $950 mortgage, so I pay $1,400 a month in rent instead. That's the sad reality. And I think we understand what game is really being played. I've shown you the BlackRock videos. It's not conspiratorial. It's just factual. They're trying to create a nation of renters. So anybody that is just trying to improve your life, if you want to change your life, you have to change your life. And I commend you. If you're looking into crypto assets, if you're looking into real estate, if you're looking for anything, even digital marketing, it's not easy to go against the herd and do something different. You're going to be ridiculed. You're going to be mocked. But I also believe that it is worth it. So for anybody trying to develop new passive income streams or make something happen with the money they have, respect. And in my opinion, the biggest risk that you can take in today's ecosystem, in today's economy for that matter, and I'm talking globally, is to solely rely on a 9 to 5 salary. You're expendable. You're a number. I realized that early on. So there's nothing wrong with trying to build little side hustles or additional income streams to ensure that you, your family, your loved ones have a nest egg. 
And no, I'm not selling anything. I'm just saying, look into crypto assets. These markets move in cycles, and this transfer of wealth does in fact only happen once. Don't be that person that sat and watched the dot-com bubble, and now you're watching the dot-com bubble 2.0 with even more money in this ecosystem than ever before, thanks to the printing, and then you watch it and say, oh yeah, I could have, I could have, should have did that. That could have, should have mindset in investing is not going to help you. It doesn't sound cool when you said, oh, I could have bought this much and had a million dollars in this crypto. That's so silly. That's what everybody does. I don't care if you coulda. I care about if you did. And last but not least, guys, I just wanted to tweet this. I, you know, tweet my thoughts, as you guys know. So, establishing great relationships and trust with people will take you very far in life. Good relationships, they're just like good investments. They require attention, care, and they pay dividends in the future. Be sure to like and sub, guys. Links are in the video description, and I will catch you in the next video.